Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we're going to be looking at Zoropod just in time for the NAIC. Uh, it's been a deck that since its sort of introduction in the London Internats right at the start of the season, it's continued to be a top tier threat uh, throughout. Uh, there was some debate whether or not it was sort of going down in play on the decline since the release of Forbidden Light because of the uh, increased power level of Buzzwall, but slowly but surely there's been an increase in support around this deck all over again as people are realizing that it's still very very good uh, and it still has some nice type coverage with the Mew and the Glissapod GX so looks you know still very standard still very strong and will definitely be alongside Zora Rock a very popular variant going into this tournament so one to keep an eye on if you're not playing it yourself so first of all let's have a look at all the counts and talk about why we're playing the cards we are First of all, 210 hit points, Zoroark, as always, nice stage one, fairly tanky, we try and ace a roller loop him if possible. It has the trade ability, once during your turn, you may discard a card from your hand if you do draw two cards, this is why Zoroark is so good. You try and get as many of these on the board as possible in almost every matchup, because drawing cards gives you control of your turn, trying to give you the most optimal turn every turn. From there, you have Riotous Beating for a single attachment, it does 20 times each of your Pokemon in play. So capping out at 120, 150 with choice band is reasonable. Uh, pretty much going for two shots throughout the entire game with this attack. It does have this very awkward weakness to fighting, which was one of the big reasons why people were put off playing Zoro in the first place, pretty much at the in introduction of Forbidden Light. Um, and that is still an issue that we're trying to work around. You can see that we played double Mew, EX and Glissapods. So we're trying to use those attackers in that matchup. It does have a nice resistance to Psychic though, which actually helps out against the pure Psychic Malamar. It means that even if a regular Necrozma would have a choice band, three energy is not going to cut it for them. They're going to need four to burst through a Zoro GX, which is pretty cool. From there, we're going to play a 3-2 line of Glissapod. Quick note on the Wimpod, because it is awesome. Its ability Wimpow allows you to retreat for free on the first turn. Uh, and this can get us into some high HP things like uh, Lele's in the early turn if we want to have early energy drives to poke things, set them up damage wise, or just to protect our Zoruas and Wimpods. Very important to note against things like Buzzwell players. So this Wind Power ability is very useful. And uh, from there, we're going to play two Glycopod GXs, 210 hit points as well, just like Zoroark. So it can also function off one energy. So they really do function very similarly. First impression does 30, and if this became our active from the bench on the same turn, you get to do 90 more damage. So again, 120 for one attachment. It's exactly the same as Zoroark. Uh, again, choice band to 150. It does have a few more options, though. Armor press for grass DC does 100. During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 20 less damage from attacks. This is actually a pretty important attack to keep in mind when you're facing up against Ultra Necrozma, because uh, it's so easy for them to hit 210 with a metal two psychic and a choice band or a beast energy and two psychic uh, that gets to 210 in both counts uh, so having the armor press forces extra energies again so that can be really nice for you and then we have the crossing cut gx attack which is the predominant one in this deck um, it does 150 damage and you may switch this pokemon with one of your bench so you get to go up to 180 which means you can one shot uh leles and a few other uh, GXs. Most of them now in the format do have 190, but Lele is still the predominant force that we're trying to one-shot here. And um, alternatively, it can just finish something off and again, scuttle to the bench to try and throw up maybe a non-GX to skew prize trade, or just a less relevant Pokemon on our board. Um, so this can be really nice for protecting our pod, so it can do things later on in the game. Has weakness to fire, which is absolutely fine. It makes, like, it's fire's pretty much evaporated from the format right now, so that's absolutely golden, to be honest. Glisspod is a very good card in the format right now. Not really checked by anything too seriously. Uh, onto the other Pokemon, we're playing two Mew EXs. That is the statement most Zorak players have had to go towards because of the threat of Boswell. Most notably, Baby Boswell. Um, having this versatile, being able to copy both Glycopods and Zoroark's attacks means that for, again, a single attachment, it can one-hit KO the baby buzzes very easily. And in the early turns, that's all you really need to do because otherwise they're going to put pr too much pressure on you by knocking out Zeruas and such. So that's really nice. It also puts them off putting out a GX in the early game as well so they can't potentially take those like multiple Zerua knockouts that they used to be able to do by jet punching a bunch. Uh, so this way, we're really putting them off that line, pretty much forcing them to go down the Lycanroc route fairly early because it's not easy for them to deal with Mew EXs. 
and once they do that, it's going to be uh, good for you because you have the Glissapod line as well. So we put them into a, we pretty much initiate a race with the Mew. Whereas before you had the Mew EXs in the list, you're always going behind in the race. And now that Buzzwell has Beast Ring, they never fall behind once they get ahead. Right? That's the that's their motto really. So having the Mew makes us be as proactive as possible. Hopefully, wimping out into it can also be helpful to get back into the active as quickly as possible and start initiating prize trade. From there, we're going to play three Tapu Lele GX. Of course, very important for that Wonder Tag, getting us rolling in the early turns. We're fully reliant on stage one Pokemon, so we're going to need um, to get our Bridgets online, and this is one of the reasons why the deck is so consistent. Energy Drive is also a decent turn one attacking option, as I've said. Again, just for that DCE, we can start putting some counters on the board, maybe setting things up for Rifus Beatings or for... Um, first impressions or other attacks later down the line as well. So Lele, we all know why it's good. And we're going to play three copies in here. From there, we're going to play uh, one counter catcher. This has been a card that's been recently adopted by a lot of players and um, really does give this deck a few more cool options available to you. Uh, similar to the, basically this came about through jealousy of the Lycanroc build because Lycanroc has been hailed defensively for being able to gust something into the active whilst playing an N on the same turn. And oftentimes that would be dealing with their draw engine card, for example, Octillery against Buzzwell. And that's something Zoropod never could do, but now with Countercatcher, that's possible for you, which is very nice. Countercatcher in general, it's like a fifth Guzma alongside Puzzles. So we're trying to have as much gust as the Zoro Rock build, but just be a one attachment deck. And the Countercatcher is one of the things that makes that all possible. So it's a really nice one of that's reusable, like I said, with those puzzles that can really catch people off guard allow you to do some very cool plays alongside things like N, so that's really worth noting. The other one of trainer we're going to play is a one Mysterious Treasure. Um, it's slightly cheaper than an Ultra Ball and it gets you a Lele, which is really nice. Uh, so that's an extra out to Bridget. Think of it as having a fourth copy of Bridget, but it's more versatile because it can also find you your Mui Xs, which again is a very important reason to play the card because you want to force out those Mews very quickly against the Buzzwell players. Otherwise, it's just going to be sinking further and further behind. So this is a, essentially a third out to the Mew EX early game alongside these Ultra Balls that we have. So that's plenty of search for this guy. On to the two ofs. Two copies of Enhanced Hammer. This has been a count that's floated up and down. There's been times in the season where I've played zero, times where I've played one. And now at the moment, we're back up to two. That's really because of the amount of other Zoroark builds that are coming back into the fray. A lot of times there are Zora rocks that just play uh, DCEs and Strongs, so going to punish that very easily with Double Enhanced Hammer, plus again the spam of uh, puzzles. So that sounds pretty good to us. Um, it's also really good for dealing with, again, if people are going to bench rock roughs, even in like Buzzwell, get those strong energies on board, get them behind in attachments as much as you can before Beast Ring comes out, put as much pressure on as possible. E Hammer is going to be a very nice card. So that's good to note. Two copies of Field Blower. We're obviously worried about Garbodor and we're worried about Parallel. You could play a third copy right now, trying to make space of those two E Hammers, trying to make space for the two Mews. It's taking up too much room, so we're having to settle for two, but hopefully reuse of Puzzle makes that reasonable. Uh, we are, of course, a little concerned about Parallel and a little concerned about Garb, but hopefully um, if the deck's working nicely enough, two should get us by most of the time alongside Puzzle. Uh, two copies of Evo Soda trying to get our Pokemon out as quickly as possible. There's been times where I've had to set a three count. It has pained me to cut down to two, uh, but I had to fit the counter catcher in somewhere because it's just a really cute card in the format right now. So just two Evo Soda right now. Uh, four Ultra Ball just for, again, getting us Lele Bridget and then finding Zoroarks from then on. Oftentimes, once your Zoroark engine is rolling, you start actually discarding these because um, the discards themselves are too painful. So you'd rather just get rid of the ball itself. Uh, if you've already got the Zoroarks online, that is. Um, full puzzle of time to recycle the most important cards in the deck. Things like DCs, Guzmas, some of these cute cards like Parallel, Field Blower, E-Hammer, Choice Band. It lets us get away with some of these awkward one-off counts and uh, makes us reuse them if they're important in the matchup. Speaking of, here is our Stadium Parallel. It's pretty much the best stadium in the game. I think it's not hard to dispute that. Um, trying to limit people's benches is very awkward for a lot of different decks, uh, let alone doing it on your own end. If you want to deal with damage stuff, get them off the board so they're no longer easy Guzma targets. And again, this reduction of damage can also be awkward for the likes of Greninja decks. Uh, maybe even in Mirror, stop them using a GX attack against you, force them to have Field Blower, Choice Band, DC, Guzma. 
uh, to deal with the lele. <laughs> so yeah, it can be pretty cool in lots of different situations. On supporters, uh, we're going to play one copy of Acerola. Again, this has been a count that's gone up and down as the format's changed. Right now, you're really only really ace rolling in mirrors and against psychic Mali. But even then, you're so favoured, I think, in that matchup that you don't need to ace a roller. So it's really exactly in here just for mirror. Um, and I feel like if you don't play ace a roller, you lose mirror. If people are going to play an extra copy or a second or like one ace roller, one max potion, I think you'll be unfavoured. Uh, if they're going to play a Rangaroo, I think you could also be unfavoured. So one's the cheekiest count possible. Um, but really in the format, I think, in terms of popularity, you're going to see Squids more than Mirror. You're going to see Buzzwell more than Mirror. And you're going to see Zoro Rock more than Mirror itself, which is Zoro Pod. Ace Red is still good against Zoro Rock, but it's more in, it's more focused on Goosmering out people in that matchup. So I feel like one copy is enough, and it's still a really cute card for healing, so... It comes in clutch in random spots, but overall it's mainly in here just for mirror. <clears throat> the two ofs we're going to play is going to be Cynthia, with some nice shuffle draw. Two copies of Mallow. I really like this introduction that a few players have been doing recently, most notably Seb Simmons, who won um, Sheffield with a two Mallow list in his Zorro Rock. And that's because, you know, why just hope to hit the cards off of these digs when you can guarantee them with Mallow? It gets you into these DCs, gets you into some of the important one ofs here and there. So Mallow is a really nice card in combination with Trade, of course. And it just makes these combos very possible on turns where we don't need to Guzma. And I feel like it's more stable than going for Cynthia plays in a lot of situations, unless you don't have one Zoroark even on your board. And that's a pretty rare state to be in. So from there, going to play three copies of N. Obviously, it's an important comeback card with this deck, as you can fall behind sometimes to... Uh, oh hit KO decks, which this deck struggles to do. And uh, we're going to play three copies of Bridget alongside the three Lele and the Treasure and the Ultra Balls. Plenty of outs to get our Bridget online very quickly to get a board of Zeruas essentially. And I'm making the statement and playing four Guzmas. Even though you have puzzles, even though you have counter catcher, I want four Guzmas. Guzma is just so important in, the, in this deck. The main reason you're doing all this trading, getting this big hand size, it's so that, so that you can do everything you want to in your turn whilst also doing a Guzma. So I want to see this card all the time. It gets you game at the very death, um, but you want to have the option as quickly as turn two if you go first. So I like having Guzma and it's just a really potent card. So I'm going to play four copies, even with puzzles. It may seem overkill. Maybe that's your cut if you want to anywhere. But for me, I really love four Guzma. Uh, one copy of Choice Band, a little bit cheeky, only playing one. It makes you slightly weaker to things like Parallel City because Zorak's damage does get hindered quite a bit. Obviously, if this is prized, it becomes an awkward thing, so you can't cross and cut. But that's pretty much the main reason why the Choice Band is in the deck. It's for this cross and cut turn, uh, and you do have puzzles to try and recover it. As long as it's not prized, it's not a huge issue. Um, just additional numbers here and there can be nice in random spots. So that is something to be aware of. Playing only one, again, it's a cute cut, but it can punish you in very small situations. So I wouldn't question it if you guys go up to two, but right now one is the cheekiest we can get really to squeeze in all these other cool cards like the second Mew and Counter Catcher and stuff like that. Two copies of Float. It's almost flip-flop from what it used to be. Uh, sometimes you saw one Float, two Choice. Um, there were even times when you didn't play any Float at all and you just played Coco. Coco's really weak against... Um, Boswell, of course, so there's no point in wimping out into that because that'll just get knocked out and you're still down a prize. So the Coco feels a lot weaker right now. Also, spreading onto 170s isn't that relevant anymore. So uh, the Coco has been cut for a float stone and then we're playing a second copy because I've already stressed this a lot, how important it is to get your Mew, in the, Mew EX in the active fighting these Boswells. You want to be attacking those early before they start taking those cheap prizes on your Zeruas because... Not only are they taking prizes and getting further ahead in the game, they're removing your Zeruas, which becomes Zoroax, which draw you into your win condition, which is having more cards than anyone else. So getting those float stones out quickly is going to be really important for accessing the Mew as quickly as possible to really threaten them. And from there, we're going to play seven energy cards, four DC and three grass. Uh, very standard. This count hasn't changed since the start of the deck being created, really. So um, makes sense having seven outs 
if you bridge it out to Zeru and a wind pod to then get into a stage one that can attack uh, is pretty nice for you, especially alongside these Mallows. I think it's pretty clutch. So there you go. Let's have a look at some Pokemon that you could be playing. Coco is the first of which I said it's sort of outdated now, really because of this fighting weakness. It makes it a lot less tanky than it used to be. There were games where you could just throw this Coco into the active and people would just like poke it or leave it on a certain turn. And then you sort of save yourself um, an early prize knockout, which is really nice for you. But that role isn't really served anymore. And like I said, the spread isn't great against many matchups, uh, especially things now having like 190 hit points. It just becomes a lot less valuable for you. Latios is a potential other card that I've seen in some lists. It's pretty nice for setting up damage with that breakthrough attack. And of course, you are a psychic type, so you're going to be trying to threaten these baby buzzwells. But at the end of the day, you're only doing 60 to baby buzzes, so it doesn't actually fulfill the role that much. I'd much rather just try smacking with the Muse, because if you're doing this sort of setup damage play, they're probably just Guzma and your Zeruas, and that's really what you want to try and stop. So uh, make them get through a Mew. Yes, they're taking an extra prize, but it's letting you build your board, and it's putting a threat in their, um, sorry, a threat in their active position. So. Yeah, I really like um, the Muse right now over any other Psychic Pokemon. You could think about Mewtwo as well. This is the one that's been around forever. But pretty much if they've built a Buzzwell GX, you're already in a really bad spot. So <laughs> I don't think it's all that often when the Mewtwo is that relevant. Additionally, it's so easy for them to pick off early Zeruas that typically they're going to get themselves to an odd prize trade regardless. Uh, so the Mewtwo is essentially losing an EX in terms of prize trades. So... It uh, doesn't make much sense to play it, in my opinion. Uh, from there, item-wise, there's not too many I would consider that I'm not playing. I would uh, play around with counts more than anything else. And maybe a second choice band, maybe a max potion is probably one I would consider. That's something that's been in the list before, which isn't at the moment. Uh, again, similar to the counter catcher, you can now do like a heal play plus a Guzma or a heal play plus an N and mess people up that way, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't think there's too many other cards I would consider greatly in this list um maybe something like reverse valley could be sneaking into these lists or um devoured field whatever it's called uh, so you can get an extra 10 damage that pushes zoroark to 130 which is again similar to the mew uh trying to combat them as quickly as possible these baby buzzwells so that's another rev uh, avenue you can go down to try and start getting one shots on these baby buzzes but the concern there of course is that there's a zoroark active and that's not really the best idea when you're up against these fighting decks. It sometimes can be fine in the early game, but also sometimes they randomly just have Beast Energy, Choice Band, Diancy, and then you're really sad. So, um, yeah, that would pretty much be it. Uh, there's actually another Pokemon that I forgot to talk about, uh, Arangaru, the uh, resource management guru. This has been in and out of pod as well. Um, there's not much mill right now because Malamar sort of keeps that at bay. There are still some Sylveon players roaming around playing Spiritomb to try and counter the Mallies. And uh, at the moment, we have no out for Mill. This guy gives you the win con against Mill. So um, if you want to, if you expect Mill for the NAIC, the Guru can come back in. He can also be a nice mirror card, actually, for recycling puzzles and Ace of Roller. So you can eventually win out that sort of healing race. Um, I think if you are going to play the Guru, it's maybe worth changing the Ace of Roller to a max pot. Because you can't free, you can't cycle Acerola as easily as you can cycle the Max Potion in the Mirror, because you can, because um, when you Acerola, you have to put down one prize Pokemon, and they can eventually just Guzma, 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 Guzma. Um, whereas if you play the Max Pots, they can't do that. So if you're going to play the Guru, that could be a slight change that you could consider, but that's really about it. So that's going to be it for the Zoropod. Let's have a look at it in battle and see how it does. I've been testing this a decent amount at the moment. I'm thinking about it for Valencia just because I have a lot of experience with the deck, but there are still some challenges for it here and there. So it's by no means the best deck in format as it has been at certain times in this season. There are quite a handful of one hit KO style decks and you're always in fear of Buzzwell, let's be honest. So let's see what we can do on the ladder here. We are going to lead with an excellent hand. Wimpod plus Lele is exactly what you're looking for, really. Uh, any out to Bridget and you're pretty much happy, especially if you have another supporter in your hand for the following turn, which we do, and an energy as well. So it's all, it's all perfect for turn two, really. Uh, let's just do this. We can even Wimp out into whatever we want. So this looks nice. Celesteela, hmm, okay. 
So probably a beast box, I want to say. Something like that. We actually top deck Bridget, so we don't need to put the Lele down. <clears throat> we have prized a Wimpod. We have prized a Zoroark. Uh, a Puzzle. A Cynthia is in our hand. No, a Cynthia. An N. And another card somewhere. Mm, where are you, mystery card? Oh, a Wimpod, right? No, we said a Wimpod. We'll figure it out. Clock is ticking, though. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Huh, I can't think. It's going to be one of our one ofs. Uh, I'm thinking now, do I want to put a Lele down just to wimp out into it? There's not really any way that he can rocket fall us this turn or we'll get any attack going, so I think we're safe enough throwing a Zerua active and just passing. <clears throat> they play, oh wow, they play unit energies. That's going to be really good for us. Wow, they have nothing. Okay. So it looks like we're not playing N here. So we can just Lele for Mallow. We'll just take the hammer floatstone, I guess. We don't really need to take the hammer. Um, because we have the Acer Roller in hand. Possibly just floatstone supporter. Floatstone second mallow. No, because we want to be a Rotor if we're not taking the E-Hammer. So, maybe it's just safest doing this. We'll still keep our Acer Rotor just in case he wants to develop anything else. Right now there's nothing to Guzma, so... We'll do this, we'll E-Hammer. And we'll come in and swing for a hundred. <clears throat> and we'll see if they have anything else in the hand, maybe just dead. They had a panic Guzma, really, because they didn't have much going for them. Playing units, what do you think they're playing? Is it. It could be Metal Garb. I think they play Metal Psychic. Possibly what he's playing. I was thinking about Naganadil, but Naganadil's got a colorless attack cost, so it can't be that. Ooh, spicy. Hmm. What are you playing, sir? Who knows? Wow, they actually had a supporter. Looks like they were just choosing not to do a painful sycamore last turn. I'm assuming N was the top deck? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Don't know what we're against, really. We only really need to start getting worried when we see Wimpods come down. Oh, uh, sorry. Trubbishes come down, though. Otherwise, I'm not too concerned by this. <clears throat> hmm. They have float. They can do a devolve play if they want to. Okay.
Trading Leia Guzma feels bad. But we get his arc out of it, so we can't be too unhappy. There's some really good trades. Securing a free attachment is nice, even though the deck is all about one attachment attackers. It's really nice to plant an extra one during your game, especially to Glissapod, because you can get a crossing cut off. They're going to Cynthia now. They have two pretty damaged EX, or well, two prize Pokemon right now. Haven't yet to really see a good game plan from their deck. Always really important to be looking at your discard pile with Zoropod. Knowing what you can access with puzzles, knowing when to dig. Digging pre and post support is another big decision sometimes with Zoro. Lots of decision making. The more cards you see, the more decisions you have. That's why Zoroark can be a challenge to learn initially. Well, that's not great, is it? Ooh. Our hand is just so good that I don't want to do anything with it. <clears throat> Mm, I'm just thinking if there's any way that he can deal with the Eli support or anything like that. If there's any reason to not attach this. Don't know if he's going to be playing Hammers, because I still don't know what sort of deck he is. I think I'll just hold stuff. Not in any fear, really. We'll just claim some prize cards, pick up another Zerua. Oh, that was what was that was our last prize. Zerua. So they have a Lele. It'll be a crazy burst turn with beast rings or something like that. I really couldn't tell you. They have Bridget. Okay. Yeah, okay, it's Metal Garb. It's what we thought it was. Let's see if they have any B-strings. Parallel is fine. As good as it is to uh, to deal with the Celestina, we're so far ahead that the only way we lose is if Garb locks us out of the game. So I'm not going to Guzma. I'm going to try and develop the board as much as we can because we've not actually gone through that much of our deck yet. For a Zoroark deck, our deck is fairly large. Plenty of stuff we can get rid of here. This is really insane. They 
Gamma in a spot where our hand is so insane that we can't do any trades. Because we don't have Field Blow, we don't want to get rid of this Choice Band because we'll need it for this. Actually, we already have uh, Armor Press that can deal with it now. Okay, so we will trade this. Uh, no, no, we will, we will. Okay. Deal with the trash. Picking up our puzzle is nice. They do seem very weak to hammers. They're gonna put a Trubbish and a Espeon back into their deck. Choice band a Lele and play Cynthia. Looks like that might be the only way they can get a single attachment knockout this turn. There's a Trash Lanch. We're gonna want to Guzma that. But only if we can uh, knock it out. And yeah, we can with uh, Armor Press. This is pretty much the exact reason why you uh, want to deal with that shrubbish that we dealt with last turn. Because now we're in no fear. I think potentially their stretcher for two targets rather than just the one shrubbish that they could put immediately on the board may have been a bit of an oversight, but now I don't see this Glisspod going anywhere. And we have some Zoroarks to play around N. So I think we never lose at this point. And I don't think it was ever in doubt this game because they had an awkward start and we have E-Hammer, which hurts them a lot. But this has been very easy. The only thing you need to remember always with Garb or decks is that going too far ahead loses you the game against Garb. It's oftentimes better to deal with Garb while you have a large hand size um, because they'll end you away if you're too dominant in prize trade and too dominant in hand size, they'll just end plus garb. Uh, so trying to deal with those is always important to navigate. And when, you're, when you have a luxury of being ahead, you basically lose yourself the game by going more ahead. You might as well just uh, slow down and deal with the garbs because those are the only things that will stop you. So I mean, right now we're getting end, but we have six more cards. We basically, we, draw two and then we're drawing seven from top deck and all of our trades so i think with nine cards we should be able to find a way to win here we have all of our puzzles now that we've pulled one from prize cards choice band is game if we can uh, puzzle that back guzma is game because we can retreat back into this so we have plenty of outs here Now these are out. One puzzle. Can we get the dream? There it is. And we can pick our way to win now. We can either Guzma or Choice Band. And they see that, that puzzles is game. So, yeah, pretty nice win against the Metal Garb, which I think isn't really a high tier deck. But let's keep moving on. You can only beat what's in front of you. Fairy fighting psychic water. Is this Guardy? Not Guardy. You're supposed to be dead. Another pretty nice hand. We have the Bridget. We have uh, double Zerua already. I may need this Zerua to be discarded from our Ultra Ball on our turn two to get a Zoroark. So I won't put it down. Oh, looks like it could be a Glade Octillery, which sounds much, much more difficult for us. We do play two Mew Xs to try and Grinch them quickly. We could one, we could GX attack one Delayed, but from there it's going to be very tricky.
Glade Octillery gaining mysterious treasure to search out Ralts and Curlia, as well as Lele, of course. Looks like it's going to be a fairly standard Lele for Bridget. Facing all sorts of stuff on the ladder today. Yep. Fairly standard. Only getting two rolls out is interesting. Could be a telltale sign that they've prized one or two. We're going to need these pods to fight for us in this game, for sure. Do I ever put a Muex down here? Just to threaten any Gilead's coming down instantly? I think I do. I'll hold Azura though, still. Because I'm probably going to have to ultra ball next turn. Probably going to have to ultra ball it away. I mean, our alternative is just to ultra ball away two puzzles. Other alternative is to single puzzle now. Let's single puzzle now. Genius. See what we're in for. That's pretty good. Yeah. So if we already have a Zoroark, we can trade Ultra Ball, get two puzzles back, which gets us nothing. So we get the Zoroark, Ultra Ball these two away for a Lele, probably. Yeah. Okay. Probably Lele N, if he does get Candy Gallade, that is. If he doesn't, we can just evolve the active. Ultra balling Sushi Master. <clears throat> Evolving into Curlier on the bench. Let's see the Abyssal Hand for four. Another Ultra Ball. Looks like they might have it. Discounting two supporters, so that hand is strong. Yep, looks like it's Candy Gallade time. And a big Sycamore, that's a really good turn for them. Our saving grace right now is that their board is really weird. I'm imagining there's two uh, two rolls prized. There's DC. They still have premonition. This is not a comfortable game. <laughs> not a comfortable matchup at all. I think the plan is deal with Gallade with a Mew, then they respond, then we use our other Mew to respond and hope that then we can Grinch the Ralts from then on and they'll just be left using Lele to attack. That's pretty much where we're at right now. So 2, 4, 6, 8, so 160, that's fine. I mean, we're only drawing into Guzma Puzzle, which sucks for us. I think we need to just wait to top deck our next puzzle. Yeah, that's what we need to do. There's nothing cool here that we can do, is there? No. No random, like, 
hugs or anything like that. Here comes the next curlier. Choice band. There's Gallade. Puzzles. Damn, already had the puzzles in hand. They've drawn pretty fluidly so far. It's also pretty rude. Good lord. Pretty disgusting what's happening right here. It's all coming together. is definitely what I want to happen. Uh, it's going to be tough. <clears throat> we have the puzzles. We've got to trade away the Sarua. N is cool. be hopeful to try and hit a uh, float stone here. We have potential extra trade. Help us extra trade, please. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. Right. Footstone or bust? Hey, we're not dead. What a dream. I mean, we're still probably dead, but at least we're stopping him, uh, premonitioning into this octillery draw, so they still need to get fairly fortunate to get a uh, another Gallade out here. Potentially the tides can turn. We still have counter catcher for next turn. We'll see. They did confidently promote a Ralts though. DC already in the hand. Abyssal hand for two. Floatstone Sushi Master. Maybe just a one abyssal hand draw. Oh, they have puzzle. They could do single puzzle here. If they have double puzzle, we always lose. We can't help that. Yeah, it's just a rearrange. That's pretty good for us. Hopefully he still can't get the stage two out. <laughs> to bench go on okay that's good that's really good for us oh 
Wow. They just have sycamore? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Cross your fingers. That's a curlier. That's excellent news. The field blow is fine. There's their last puzzle. Gonna do a little rearranging. And a quick turn, no. Ah, oh, that's gross. That's really gross. Oh man. For all it's worth, we'll play the end. Because they did do a single puzzle, remember? Uh, that's rough, man. I think if that's not double heads, we have a really good shot of winning this game. We need his 19 card deck to be pretty bad, pretty harsh to him here. They only have one DC at the moment, though. They probably need to hit special charge. If they play special charge. If they just play puzzles, we can still win. Treasure doesn't get them delayed, obviously. That could be a Lele, though, for a better supporter. Yep, there's a Lele. Oh, maybe they're just discarding it for more draw. Okay, they're discarding everything else. <laughs> Do they grab the Gallade now? No, they're just going to take nothing. So you're just going to clean. I didn't even put down the Lele. Okay. There's the DCE. Oh, God. There's the Choice Band. Here comes their supporter. All in, as they say. Now they just need Candy Gallade. They only have... Uh, nine cards in the deck, so they should be getting it at this point. They have uh, three three candies, two glades. I don't think they can miss. God damn. And that's the benefits of Diancy being added to the deck. You can one-shot the Lele's. Two heads on quick, whatever it is, was ridiculous, though. Cheers, game. <laughs> <laughs> What a mess. Let's have one more game with this deck. Maybe play something standard a couple days before the NIC, but who knows? <laughs> oh, dearie me. We've had some nice starts. It's one of the best feelings about the deck when you just see a Bridget turn one. Metal dot deck. So we've prized two Wimpods. E hammer's in our hand, right? No, we prized an E hammer. Prized a goose. Prized a field blower. And we prized an N. Okay. Chill. We'll get our attachment in. And we'll send it their way. Solo Prism is a big boy. Difficult to deal with. 
But we do have the outs for a turn to Guzma. Potentially not anymore. <laughs> we didn't have any clean outs for stage one, so this is probably fine. We're just going to end straight back. Hope to hit some Zoroarks or Evo Sodas. That's the Zoro. Trade with one of these Ultra Bulls. E Hammer probably not great in this matchup. I'll hold it for Ultra Ball next turn for Lele. We'll smack this. Try and get it before it gets value. I mean, it may only need this turn to get value, to be honest, but... Currently no energies in their discard pile. Second attachment goes here. Skylar. Skylar for Nest Ball. Incredible. That's one third as good as Bridget. Oh my god, it's a Magnezone deck. Okay, change of plans. <laughs> uh... So frustratingly, we probably want to deal with the Magnemite. But that lets him have the GX attack, which is really bad for us. So we probably have to hit this first. Hope that his four card hand can't get him this. But if he's skylaring Nest Ball just for the one, gotta be suspicious. Let's trade this. I think I'm goosmering up this boy. Because we forced the Magnezone to actually be out here. I'm going to retreat back into this Zoroark though, because if he does do the, uh, get a Magnezone and go for a big Meteor Tempest, we can then, uh, GX attack his, uh, Magnezone. So we'll Guzma and come back active. because we can just simply double puzzle for Guzma DC if he does get the Magnezone down. The real fear is if he goes Candy, Magnezone, Energy, Active, Energy, Active, Energy, Bench, Bench, you know? But that's a pretty insane turn. Can't really play around that happening too much. Okay, so their the hand is far from insane. Do we just get another Zoro? Or do we get a card that we can just trade away? I mean, Evo said it's still a tradable card. I'm just thinking if it's better for me to just draw more here to have more options than just getting another Zoro. I think we'll trade this away. Trying to extend our hand size a bit more. Already worth it because we've got a Zoroark. <laughs> Super worth it. The engine's rolling now. You gotta feel good when there's four Zoroarks on the board. It's impossible not to feel good. 
get an extra attachment as well. That is the spice. Oh, we actually still have one more trade. Sequencing lol. So let's see what they can do now. They still need to candy zone if they're going to respond on us with a GX attack even, so... And if they do that, we still have treasure for Lele for Guzma to do the same thing again, so... We're prepared, even if a Magnazone comes out. They have Stretcher. Super odd as well, so they can at least draw a card with Guru now. One Instruct card. Elixir. Playing Elixir on Magnazone. Spreading the energy. Do they have a turn attachment? Oh, they have a Cynthia. Okay. They're alive. Elixirs again. Attaching here though, so spreading it out it looks like. <clears throat> Let's do some training then. Acer feels useless in this matchup. Nothing's living. This parallel will be awkward for him. So we Guzma this, he GXs, then we finish, then he still has to try and... Yeah, without energy acceleration, it's still hard for him to do this, so... Is it worth me just DCing here and hitting for 80? <clears throat> we keep a Zoroark on our board. Our deck is only 10 cards. Um, King of 80 gets it down to 110. That's probably fine. Actually, the Lele can go bigger, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Uh, yeah, maybe this keeps this in check. Okay. Because our deck is so thin, let's not be greedy with our Zoros. Let's try and uh, build a big Lele. There's the attachment for the GX attack this turn. There's a Sycamore. <clears throat> they're relying on more Elixirs, possibly B-Strings, but I'm doubting they're playing B-String, Elixir, and Magnazone. There's the big GX attack. And they concede. Yeah, they concede. There was only one way this game was going. <laughs> yeah. So, we faced three... Pretty wild decks. We lost to the Gallade, which is probably a hard matchup, but also in unfortunate circumstances. Um, and we were able to beat the other two decks. So not too much demonstrated there, except for the fact that we're looking to Guzma on a lot of turns. So I hope that shows off that we're validating playing four copies. Um, Countercatcher could have come off against the Gallade player, but they just happened to did the... The thing on the Mew and the stuff and the sadness, you know. But who knows. Let me know what you guys think about Zoropod and its placement in the format. Let me know what you think about the list itself. What would you change? What are you going to be playing for the NAIC? Get it all down below. I'd love to hear from you. So that's going to be it, guys. And pretty much after the NIC is wrapped up, me and Jack are going to Valencia, which is the weekend after, which actually is this format, but looking at 2019 season points-wise. So once that's all wrapped up, we'll be moving on to um, 
the new format, the next set. We're actually recording that uh, this evening, so uh, that'll be coming up Friday or Saturday, depending on uh, how long it takes to edit and stuff. So it uh, should be good. And yeah, new set hype is around the corner, so it's cool to finish off with Zoropod, a favorite of mine. And yeah, that'll be it for today, guys. See you next time.